You could say that this story starts in 1549 with the building of Uppsala Castle. A Renaissance castle should of course have a park or a garden. And after some trial and error, they decided on the present location that you see behind me. Some 200 years later, the park was given by King Gustav III to the university to use as a new botanical garden. He gave it on one condition, the park had to be maintained as it was. And if you compare to one of the earliest pictures we have, taken around 1860, not much has changed. Now, it took some time before the park became a truly public place, but the students soon arranged that. By the 1850s, this had become the center for the student spring fest. And um, that was simply a celebration to the arrival of spring. It was greeted with song and speeches, followed by big dinners and dancing at the student nations. These days, the park is used for a lot of other events. You have theatrical performances, you have art exhibitions, concerts and parties of all kinds. Also sport events take place here. But uh, of the theatrical performances, probably the most famous are the set that was done in the 1950s, where the Greek tragedies were performed with the Linianum as a backdrop. It's still talked about today, 70 years later. Now, the royal donation was not only the park, it was also funds to build a palace of botany to the name of Linnaeus. This became Linianum. The house was supposed to contain an orangery, a large lecture hall, a museum, and even the official residence of the professor of botany. Now, the building was inaugurated in 1807 for the 100th birthday of Linnaeus. The whole building was named Linnaeanum, and uh, for good measure, a statue of the man was placed on the center line. This was meant to be the main lecture hall of the building, but uh, some architectural changes made it undoubtedly a much more spectacular room, but it gave it a rather troublesome acoustics. Today, the Linnianum building is home to the Swedish Collegium for Advanced Study. This is a national scientific institute founded in 1985. And in this historical context, you may even say it's relatively young. We are now in the Thunberg Dining Hall. And this is a place for a variety of academic meetings and social events. It is really a place for conversation, contemplation and socialising. The hall is named after this gentleman, Carl Peter Thunberg. You can say he's truly the domineering force in the early history of this building. He came to Uppsala to be a student for Linnaeus, and after graduation he started a nine-year-long journey of exploration, taking him by the way of South Africa, Java, on to his final goal, Japan. And there he spent more than one year. Upon returning to Uppsala, he became the first professor of botany here and served in that position for 44 years. The exploratory spirit is still our signature. We are now in the Thunberg Lecture Hall and this is where we hold our weekly seminars and our lectures. We at the Swedish Collegium strive to offer our fellows optimal research conditions. We offer scholars from all across the world the opportunity to be driven by their own intellectual curiosity, to devote time to their own research interests and to engage in discussions across disciplinary boundaries. Now, the orangery is still in use today. The garden actually lifts in bushes and whole trees here for storage over winter. It's always good to remember that the botanical garden is actually a continuously ongoing research environment. 
since we started, our fellows have come from the humanities and the social sciences, but now we have expanded to also include the natural sciences, and this is to promote cutting-edge research and engagement across the faculties. And of course, the natural sciences have a long history in these premises. Now, the inner courtyard have seen many great events in the history of Uppsala University. We celebrated the 400th anniversary in here with a huge dinner in a specially built pavilion. Later, the 300 years birthday of Linnaeus was celebrated in here, but inside a tent, we had somehow misplaced the pavilion. At the Swedish Collegium, we believe in the power of curiosity. A curious mind can take you far. We also strive to protect academic freedom worldwide. If you're interested in applying, have a look at our website. There you'll find information about our fellowship programs and how to apply. And you're also welcome to join our academic seminars and events. We hope to see you here. <laughs>